JB, you uh, you you gonna get on the golf course today? Today is not a golf course day. Today is a work day, actually. And, Today's um, work day, so no golf know. for you, Sean. Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm going out. Yeah, I'm going. By out. the way, I got new clubs. Oh, nice. I Good just got you. them today. I just got the new. I got the same ones that you got. The beautiful Those, Titleist I irons. The Titleist. I should mention. Titleist. Titleist. Now you should get yourself into some G4 apparel and really, uh, you know, make yourself complete. Uh, okay. You know? I mean, I I would. I but I wear I got I wear the Foot Joy. I love the Foot okay. Joy. You like the G4? Jeez. Yes. And the title is clubs. The title. If is you were clubs. ever to fly to a tournament, how would you like to get By there? By the way, I don't even know if we can use it in the cold <laughs> open, but I just got a five wood. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to Smartless. Smart. Look, they got a whole. You got a whole setup in your green room. It's nice. I know. I've got. Believe me, I, they've. Uh, it's pretty great. It's nice. Wait a second. I'm seeing two surprise guest windows. Yeah. Oh, listener. Yeah, oh, we got a listener. Oh. Listener always knows before. Yeah, they know. The, us two other yeah, idiots. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's everybody advertised. knows except me and Sean right now. We've got it's always guest. everybody knows except for the two dummies that week. Yeah. Oh, right. dummy today. <laughs> <Does that work? laughs> I feel pretty dumb today. I don't, um, dumber why do you than usual. Feel dumb? Why do you feel no, dumb? No, I just don't feel like I'm going to be great, um, at listening or talking today. Do you want, well, Jay, do you want a couple jokes to lighten you up? If you have new, here we go, new, Sean, uh, here we go. Here new, we go, Sean. Okay, my, my favorite is still, uh, what did the chicken say? Uh, what did the chicken Oh boy. What on yeah. the chicken? <laughs> no, what did the no. <laughs> Do you see guys? Fuck. What did it's the not going to be good today. <laughs> <laughs> what did the chicken say what? No, what what does uh see? Pol I forget too. What does poultry say to a bowl of lettuce? Or no, what does poultry call a bowl of lettuce? Right. What? Chicken sees a salad. Uh, <laughs> that's so good. That's good one. Here about I have two more. I have two more. Uh, so a skeleton walks into a bar and orders a bar. Um, a skeleton walks into a bar and orders a beer and a mop. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other one is, uh, hey, Jason, have you heard about the new movie? Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we do a punchline on the first one? About the skeleton? <laughs> that is. There is already. No, he doesn't get it. What happened? <laughs> a skeleton walks into a bar and orders a beer and a mop. Okay. Because when he drinks the beer, it goes, right? He, he doesn't have a... Yeah, well, okay. that's not even funny, though. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, that's different. I mean, All right, subjective. so here's the other one. Okay. Hey, Jason, have you heard about the new movie Constipation? No. It never came out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like either one of them. I liked your, um, All right. uh, what did, uh, um, wait, I'm oh trying to figure fuck. out. This is, <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> it's like people are joining us at rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, we clearly don't rehearse. I apologize already to our you guests. You know what I was saying? You know, Jason, I was thinking about you the other day, and it occurred to me, like, you know, you see people have, like, fancy houses where they talk about, like, oh, I went to this fancy place, and you think about some billionaire, and they have this mm. fancy thing. And I said, yeah, you know, that's impressive. And if you feel, like, less than because you see them, just imagine that no matter where they went, they had to take a shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just took a shit there. Yeah. Yeah. That's their pretty much beautiful all they mansion. And it was just them in the smallest room in that house with the door closed, <laughs> looking for point. the fan yeah. and taking a shit. Yeah. What's and the name of that? There's true. a book called that, right? Everybody poops. Everybody, Everybody poops. poops. Yeah. Remember that book? All right. This is going on too long. It's too okay. insane. I feel like Regis and Kathy Lee. Let's go. I know. Okay. I, it's true. But I, now, listen, I do want to get to uh, our guest because you know how I get when I get really excited about oh, a guest. Yeah. And you know how I get when we get to talk about music with guests. Oh, huh? oh. I get very excited. Well, yes. <clears throat> these fine gentlemen are no exception. Uh, I have been a massive fan of these guys since their debut record. And in fact, their debut single, which, uh, by the way, is a single that has remained in the UK it holds the record for the longest time on the UK charts over 300, like seven years on the UK charts. Wow. It's a song we all know uh, and love. And then since then, they've just released banger after banger, incredible album after incredible album. They're, I've seen them in concert multiple times. They're incredibly gifted, gifted, gifted songwriters, performers, singers, drummers, everything extraordinaire. Guys, it's none other. 
mm-hmm. than Brandon Flowers and Ronnie Venucci of The Killers. The Killers. No, oh, the I Killers. Was just talking about them the other day. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Good look at that. morning. How cool is this? Dude. Look at dude, that. This is crazy. This is- how great wow. is this? Hi, guys. You guys look very much alive. Not killers at all. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Huh. You guys are very much on tour right now. Yeah, they're both in hotel rooms. Yeah. Right? That's right. You, yeah. Just uh-huh. roll, you just literally rolled out of bed. I mean, <laughs> this is, we've just disrupted your, your, you probably have like a really good system in place and we've ruined it. <laughs> we have a, I definitely have a routine that is being disturbed right now. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where are you on the planet? We're in Austin. Austin, okay. Tech. Austin. Okay. Well, Austin, Tennessee. I mean, That's a great state. JB, no, no, no. <laughs> JB, JB. Uh, boys, we're so excited to have you on this show. I mean, I've had the good fortune uh, of meeting you guys and talking to you a few times, uh, which was a thrill then and it's a thrill now. And I'm such a fan. And I think the, the first time I saw you guys was on a sketch show. Yeah. Uh, and I think it was 2006. Brandon, am I right about that? We played earlier than that. Oh, you played uh, earlier? So I yeah, saw it the probably- second time? Yeah, probably. If it was Sam's Town was our second record, we we would have done. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So is the Sam? I guess that's. But I think probable. we. But I remember t- meeting you. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was maybe after our third time. Wow. wow. Was it really? Can I tell the story of what uh, at the no. after party? At the after party. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah yes. Please do. Brandon, so they always ahead. have an after party on the sketch show, and um, <laughs> and we and Will's there. And he's got a he's got a hockey player with him and another fellow citizen of Canada. Shanny probably Brendan Shanahan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I, what Amer- what I guess quintessentially what all Americans do, I say, hey, our tour, my tour manager is from Toronto. I know you're from Toronto. Yeah, <laughs> and they all and, know each other. Yeah. So his, so his buddy his buddy rolls his eyes and he's like, these Americans think we all know each other. So I go and I grab my tour manager. And he's like, oh, you know, what area of Toronto are you from? Oh, oh, what street are you? What street were you on? Farnham Avenue. Yes. They both lived on the same oh, get street. Out. Wait, Brendan, I can't believe you remember Farnham Avenue. Well, I, well, a tour, our tour manager is still, he's still with us. It went, does he, but he doesn't still live on Farnham. He doesn't still live on Farnham. I think his no, parents I, might. I, his parents might still live on Farnham. My sister still lives on Farnham. I should call it. <laughs> but he still lives on Farnham. Wait, wait. His parents, his parents still live on Farnham. Still there. Yeah, no yeah, they're still there. Wait, and my buddy Paul lives on Farnham as well. And my listener has probably pulled over their car because they're so fascinated right yeah. now. Oh, they don't want to yeah. miss a minute of it. The, okay. Yeah. Look, the gist is you all know each other. We all know each other. And Brendan, yeah. and Brendan that, I remember that moment too. That was so crazy. And what I'm going to propose now for you and Ronnie right now is maybe we do a special live, like just a small <laughs> event concert on the street in Farnham. Me yeah. introducing you guys, and we just do it for the people of Farnham. What do you, just think about it. Don't give me an okay. answer now. Stop the back of a truck. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, can you keep it down? So listen, yeah. I have a question <laughs> for you guys. Um, when you first performed on there, where were you in your careers? And was that a pinnacle of like, oh my God, I think I made it. And what did that feel like? I think it's been a steady incline of, of just like, uh, sort of like, a, how did we get here? Yeah. And we've just <laughs> been sort of in, enjoying the ride. Yeah. I mean, ever ever since, I mean, the the very first one, it just keeps it just keeps you know something keeps happening, and we you know we we keep busy. We we know what a what a opportunity this is. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but you guys came. But your first record, though, I mean, you guys came out with a bang, and it's kind of been. You've had the good. For- I'm not going to say good fortune because you're really talented. And you guys make good music, but you've luckily kind of struck a chord with people every step of the way. And that's got to feel good because you got to feel like we're kind of in touch with with what's going on in a way. Did, 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 is that a, something that's real? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think we, our goal has always, there's this constant evolution and you watch, we, we've, we've, we haven't, not every step that we've taken has been right, but you can see us tr- really trying to find um, the, what the core is and what, what we're going to represent. And, and you see this, this evolution of, within each album. And I think people have just, we've been lucky enough that we've been able to take people along with us or they've been going through that same experience. Yeah. I always wonder about that with, with musicians is because you, you, have, you have probably, well, you certainly have more autonomy than anyone in, uh, in TV or movies in that, you know, there's a script that comes before the actor does their thing or the director does their thing or um, with with musicians, with groups, 
you can do whatever you want, make the album about whatever you want, make it sound whatever, and you got to hope that the audience that has been with you thus far, it will be appealing to them as well. So how much do you factor in mm. what you think they want? How much do you let that affect your creative process? Um, I'm sure some bands a little bit and, um, and then some not at all. Where do you guys sit on that? I, I think we have to like it first. And yeah. Anything that comes comes out, you know, we've we, we have tons of cutting room floor, yeah, uh, stuff um, that for whatever reason, just you know, they're they're lost dogs or orphans, orphan songs or ideas. Yeah. Um, but if it sounds good to you, no matter whether it's it's got a a country vibe or an acid rock vibe or a yeah. jazz vibe, like, cause you guys, I'm sure your musical taste will evolve over years. Um, and you guys have to stay in sync with one another, but then also try to stay in sync with that, with that other band member, which is the audience. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a balancing act. I think we used to, we used to just throw all sorts of songs on a single album and we've just sort of been lucky that they've had, some sort of congruent line between all of them. Yeah. And now I think we're getting more into like the body of work right. sort of uh, idea where it's, it, it, it has a, a focus and, um, and you've created a bank with your audience that, you know, even though it might sound a little bit different or a little bit more challenging to tap your toe to, you mm -hmm. don't worry about it. We got you and we've we've proved. Um, I don't think you guys ever run the risk of having a song that you can't tap your toe to. I will say that <laughs> much. And That's nice. But Thank you guys, you. but I was going to say like, and, and JB, J, Hi. JB, you're right that, that like <laughs> when you talk about they're like the other audience member is, I mean, the other member of the band is the audience, like, there's some story that I heard about you guys a long time ago, and, and, and maybe you can talk about this, that when you guys were maybe writing Hot Fuss like, or something that you, you wrote a record and you threw it out, is that true? Do you talk about it as much as you're comfortable talking about that? Is, is that a true story? That's uh, our most recent endeavor. Oh, it was your most recent record. Your yeah. most recent record you tossed in the trash. We, well, we, Wait, you finished it and then just threw it out? We began down down a road that was a more synth heavy road. Uh -huh. Okay, and we have we, we realized um, that this I, you know I just personally f f didn't want to make this music anymore. And Ronnie was Ronnie didn't want to do it either. <laughs> and so, uh, no as way. opposed no to way. as opposed to the instrumental stuff. No, just as a no, just didn't want to make didn't want to fully commit to a, a whole like synth pop record. I would have bought that in a but second. But what would be the opposite of that? Oh, you're talking to an idiot here. What? Okay, what okay. So is... the opposite would be like maybe more ro a rock and roll record. Gotcha. So, but what is that process? So, like, you're what? You're working on like your fourth song, and you look, you're in the studio, and you're rehearsing, and you look at each other, and just go, "The fuck are we doing, man?" Uh, yeah, <laughs> and everybody else just like breathes, like, oh, "Thank God you said it," because I didn't want to oh, say it. Oh, that's gotta be horrible. No, it's a, it's complex because we, I, there's this place in our hearts for this music. We, we yeah. were, we were influenced by it, okay. but we're get, you know, but we are getting older, and we've also know what it feels like to write um, a great rock and roll song, right. and so we thought, we thought maybe that you could make a faster album maybe while you're on the road because you're, you're dealing with computers more with right. synth music mm. and keyboards. Yeah. And mm. then it just wasn't, f we weren't getting the gratification out of it that we would get when you're writing. Yeah, because ready. like you're, you're, you're right. I was in a synth pop band in college and oh boy. Yeah, I played, yeah. the, I played so the keyboard. Sorry. You have to see a picture. And uh, have, there's we a do have, Sean, eye Sean by the way, play for these guys. If you yeah. can find it, play that song that you played us before. Just so they oh, can. Oh yeah, well there's three songs. Before we end, the, before we end today. Yeah. yeah, well I'll have the, I'll Bennett and Rob dig it up. Um, yeah. There's there's actually three hit songs. You guys sure. might want to put it on. We'll, rip, we'll rip those off too. Yeah, you can rip those off. Yeah. Yeah. You Ronnie, have, that's, you're not good. You might take that back. <laughs> I used to play the keyboards in this in this band called Sounds from the Stairs. Thanks. <laughs> the keyboards. Nice. Hey, did you ever yeah. play guitar, Sean? <laughs> no, almost okay. though. I'd love to see. Sean, it. I've seen you. I've seen you play it. You play beautifully. Oh, that's I, I was very so nice. impressed because I saw the Netflix special and I was I was so I did not know you had that in in your pocket. There. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Classically thanks, trained. Man. He is. He yeah, is a Jason. Talent. I sat down and played for Jason Bateman. Yeah, um, Sean, do you want to join our band? I, did, I knew where Whoa. this was going. That's what Whoa. I'm telling you. Yeah, Whoa. yeah. I'll join your band. Whoa. Okay. Um, Whoa. This is. I, I can't believe you're getting in the killers before me. <laughs> we made news. Yeah. No, I yeah. can't do anything. But I'm still well, mad I'm gonna, about. I'm going to turn you guys into synth pop. 
guys. <laughs> it's the last thing you I were, do. You were the missing link. The record could have come out. I would. I know what you mean though about like playing like because I would play the keyboards and like try to really be into it. Like a drummer can really be into it naturally because right, Ronnie, because you're just like your body's moving anyway to the music. But when you play keyboards, you kind of have to watch exactly the keys you're playing. So you can't really like move your body to rock out during the music. You just have to kind of like stay stiff Do a lot of and neck play pop, while the a craziness is happening. You know what I mean? <laughs> a, lot, a lot of what? Oh, a yeah. lot of neck pops. Yeah, not neck <laughs> pops. Right. <laughs> right. So I would, be, I would be playing like crazy. I'd be like jumping around dancing. And then when it got to my solo, I'd stop and really focus on the keyboard, <laughs> the keys I was playing. And then as I was done, I'd go back into playing, back into but jumping around. But you can't around. do, you can't just, do the fuck. You can't yeah. like bang, did, did, bang. Like, you just got fired Right, like at the end of like all, all these things that I've done, where you're like bang, did, 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 You can't do that on notes. So this move, from synth back to to rock and roll. Uh, you, now you're talking to the the old the grandpa and me too. Like I, I, I listen. I'm a big like Radiohead fan. Then they they kind of went to synth a, a, a while ago, and I kind of went with it. And I guess mm -hmm. I'm still with it because they know better than me what good music is, and so I get with it. Um, <laughs> you, but I, I you but like I, them despite what they're doing. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm an despite, easy life. despite what your ears tell yeah, you, you're exactly. gonna just listen. <laughs> but, I love those too, but. but, but I, I, but you know, I listen to all this music that my kids listen to, and right. it, it, like, no one is playing guitar anymore. There's no drums anymore. There's no, yeah. and I know I sound like the old man on the lawn, but um, can it? Do you see it starting to go back to? I mean, I'm, I get nostalgic about a band as young as you know the White Stripes or you know the Black <laughs> Keys or like these like rock and roll bands. Or, I'm not even going back to ACDC or Led Zeppelin, but. Like where's all? Where are the instruments? We're talking to him. I, I, I'm yeah. I'm excited that you guys are going back to that. Well, there was a. Sh it, we've only been around twenty years, and in those from from when we started, rock radio was a different, a completely different animal. Mm -hmm. And it's it's there are fewer and fewer stations, and they started to it's just this homogenization started to happen where they yeah. started to incorporate. All of a sudden, you started hearing beats. And and things that were influenced by maybe more hip hop and mm -hmm. and 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 now it's just it's almost unrecognizable as as rocket anymore. Well, yeah, and that's a good. And, and Ronnie, speak to a little bit as as a drummer. What's it like living in a world where so many beats are created on a computer? You know, mm -hmm. like I always say, like the, here's the drummer in our band, and he's standing by a MacBook. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I think there's I think there's a. A, a careful, a cl maybe a classy balancing act. At least, for, at least for me, I've seen people who um, are so good at their instrument, at drums, that mm -hmm. they actually sound like they're they've been, you know, manipulated in a computer. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, you know, all the all the different uh, things you can manipulate in inside a computer and things. But I don't think it'll ever replace the blood, you know, coursing through somebody's brain. And body uh, to produce uh, a sound or a an expression. And is that where is is that where you guys got to? Was that part of the decision? When you just like when you're saying you were an into, was it literally that you're like we're not feeling connected to the music? Partly, you can't. There's a, an amazing thing that happened that I that I now reflecting on our, you know, the magic moments that we've shared. Um, is me, I'm responding to the way that Ronnie plays. And part of it is how how loud it is mm -hmm. and how it's powerful sorry. and it's physical. So it forces sorry. me. Ronnie, did you just say sorry? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, we're in a if we're in a room, I got to sing a certain way. I can't yeah. be timid. You're not going to hear me. Right. And so I, it's, 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 there's, there's something about those dynamics that have, Help us yeah. become. Can what I tell you something, Brandon? Yeah. The beat's bigger than you, and I get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? It's interesting you bring that up, Brandon, because because the way you guys, um, first of all, your arrangements on, on all your studio albums are amazing, and I've seen you live as well. It's just amazing. But the the mix, the way you guys do it, and it's a testament to your voice because I know that no matter what you do and playing with the, the how you're hearing yourself, it's really tough because uh, yeah, Ronnie, you should be sorry. You're very loud. And and all the instruments in your band, the rhythm section is is it has, has you know you really feel it. I mean, you guys come out and really, and guitar and everything, and that's tough to 
get to break through that, I bet. I mean, that that's a that's a skill to be able to, because you do sound very front and center, even though the band is also very full at the same time. I, the mix is, I, I want to I want to compliment whoever mixes your records, uh-huh. uh, but you do it. It is tough to do, and I've seen, again. I've so I saw you guys play at this at this concert that the, this guy had, and you played, and there were about two hundred people there. And Paul McCartney was in in the crowd, maybe two hundred people. And Brandon, you go. Um, you said something like, uh, "Hey, we want to sing Helter Skelter, but uh, Sir Paul McCartney, I see you out there, and would you do us the honor of coming and singing with us?" And Paul McCartney got up wow. and sang Helter Skelter with these fucking guys, and it was un. Unbelievable. <laughs> really? And so I came backstage. You remember after I came back, you were in that little room and I said, How are you feeling? You were just buzzing. And you guys, I go, How are you feeling? You're like, I just sang Helter Skelter with Paul McCartney, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Do you remember? I mean, you obviously yeah. remember that. Yeah, it was so wild, man. Um, we, uh, for, it was even more surreal moments was before he came up, you, you know, you're, you're singing and you look over and he has his cell phone out and he's filming you and it's like singing along to smile like you mean it and i was just like what is happening it was the, it was one of the That's most really wildest cool. things the other thing that uh with uh with 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 bands needing to tour a lot more now as a w- way in which to m- monetize what you guys do since album sales changed a long time ago and and now touring's a huge huge part of what you guys do i would imagine that switching back to a more instru- instrumental thing as opposed to a, a synthesized thing makes playing stuff live easier more exciting for the audience since you're not just hitting a button for the drum sounds you actually need a drummer and drum kit out there y- yes is it it just makes for a better experience if the music is is not synthesized right oh, oh yeah i mean we've even songs that don't have a lot of uh synthy bits we've we've sort of tailored for the you know for for live we sort of have like th- right, okay. this dichotomy between being a live band and uh, uh a you know studio doing things in the studio yeah and oftentimes we just sort of have tunnel vision where we're just we we forget about the live aspect sometimes and and we just go with like this ex- this experience of you know recording and then we're like okay well how do we dial this in for a live experience and and that could be you know it's not just sounds but it's like it's tempo too you know we'll mm-hmm. uh, oftentimes we'll speed stuff up or or sometimes we'll slow stuff down we slowed an Do you ever speed there. stuff up just to get out there get out of there sooner uh, <laughs> <laughs> No I, I just I did the show job. on Broadway where I had played the Rhapsody and I was like I'm fucking tired and I would just I would play it twice as fast I like that. <laughs> you, guys miss, dinner date. you guys miss Sean. He was on Broadway this year. He won a oh, Tony, awesome. by the way. Hold for applause. Oh, God. And we'll add, no, we'll add the applause. Yeah, yeah, we'll, His was spelt T-O-N-I-E, though. <laughs> yeah, it was different. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, it wasn't the, what you think yeah. of the Tony yeah. Awards. Yeah. No, no. Like the line. <laughs> but he played, and he played every night to end the show on piano, and he's, uh, like we talked about, an, uh, an accomplished pianist. Okay. And uh, he had to do it every goddamn night and uh, yeah, Sean, you said that some nights you would just jam through like, it, and the cast and the cast would be like, "Was that like?" Because it's usually like eight, eight, nine minutes. They're like, "Was that four minutes?" Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, "Yeah, I'm tired. I want to go home." <laughs> yeah, what do you do when you when you, yeah? What do you do when you get out there in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people and you're just not feeling it? Yeah, I mean, what do you, you do? just kind of wait until you do because you got other bandmates that can maybe carry the water for a song or two. It's rare. I I, I don't know about Ronnie, but it's rare that I'm not excited that the juices don't just start right. flowing and the butterfly. I get I still get the butterflies yeah. Yeah. before, and so it's almost up to the audience. There there will be moments where you come out and you think it's you're just so ready and they aren't. They aren't, li- like, they aren't they aren't meeting your expectations, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. when it can be. Th- those are the times it's it's a struggle. But I never feel like ah oh, another gig. I, I, I never feel like that. Right? Don't you? T- because each each every audience for some uh, takes on a collective kind of energy, and sometimes, like you're saying, it's it's a less than energy. And don't you just get really pissed off at them <laughs> and want to take it out on them, and you can't. I'm gonna say they don't. I'm gonna answer. I, I bet they don't. No, yeah, we don't, we, we can't take, yeah, we can't take it out on them. We gotta right. be professional. All right. Sean hates his When's the last time you guys, no. do you guys, do you guys see a lot of live music yourself? Do you guys go to concerts and, and, and kind of experience what it's like as an audience too, and kind of let that inform your, your uh, performances? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, especially on tour, if, we've, if we're, we're touring with somebody, it's, it's always helpful to get out there and, and just, you know, it helps get the, the blood moving a little bit. Oh, we're, we're going to be doing that in an hour. You right. so you, in who an you hour? Been, who you, yeah, well, yeah. No, I mean, you know, watching somebody before, oh, right, right, before right. you play or something. Who do you guys, like, who are you guys touring with uh, right now? Like, who in the last year? Oh, wait, I don't want to put you on the spot. We can always. It's okay. Yeah, no, we had, you know, we, we did a, a ton of shows with Johnny Marr. From the oh Smith. yeah, love. Oh my God, I love Johnny. Marr. Love Johnny Marr of the Smith, the JB. So well, you, you know, you don't have to one of the great, one of the pearls. Well, one of the great, well, one of the top three guitarists. One of the top three guitarists of all time. One of the top three guitarists of all. Oh yeah, yeah. I do you like the Smiths? I love the Smiths. Yeah, no, you know what we did? We did a Smiths, one or two Smith songs. We would do yes. every night with them. Yes. No way. I, what songs? I, I, I just saw you. I just saw a Sean, video shut of you guys. Up. Shut the fuck up, Sean. What what songs did we you guys did, do of this? We with? did we did well we did this charming man with him is how we first. Oh, oh, I love it. And Sean? then we we did we did please 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 let me get what I want. Once, ah, it's one, it's, great. it's the greatest song ever. One of Listen to this one. How deep do you go with the Smiths? We did. I, what did, she, I go very. We I did, did what sure. we did what, what she, we did what she said. <laughs> oh my. Yes, God. I know what she said. Yeah. You almost put like two hands on your rock, pearls just then. Like fully punk rock Smiths. What she said. We did Stop Me, if you think you've heard this one before. Oh, yes. Stop Me, uh, 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 Stop, uh, stop Me. You, you, stop you know me. what's wild? Yeah. They they broke up before they toured that. That's on the last album. Is that, is that uh, hang on, is that not louder than Bombs? Is that? No, Stop Me on, is on Strange Ways. Here oh, Strange Ways, here we come, yeah. So Fuck. so we're up there, and we're about to play it, and he tells me, you know, I, I've, never, I've never played this with a singer. No way. Wow. So I was, I was like, this is wow. so... Amazing. That's weird. Yeah, you're up there singing Stop Me with him, and it's the first time he's done it because it was meant to be with Morrissey. That's crazy. Were they Were they a big... Who Who are your big influences? Uh, I've always wanted to know because you guys have... Definitely the Smiths. Yeah. 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 You know, wow, the, the, that's so cool. I can hear it now that you say that. I guess I can hear some of it. We were we were just... Last night, we were, uh, we were uh, singing uh, some early Depeche Mode Oh, um, here they come! Don't get me started. Yeah, <laughs> that, so that that Brandon and I sort of we 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 we, we melt. We like that band. Yeah, yeah, they're incredible. They're incredible. Yeah. Now there's what a lot of what other what other that, bands? This, I want to hear what other I'm bands. Sorry. I just want to hear what other bands they liked. <laughs> okay, uh, it up. was it was new New Order and the Smiths yeah. and the Cars. Guys, mm. I mean, we're it's like we're family. Yeah, you guys <laughs> Sean, can stay you here. Change, Sean, go change. Your name. <laughs> You're saying you guys, I did love, you guys get you guys, in? Were you guys Gordon. influenced at all by any sort of like '90s indie bands too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ron, oh, Ronnie's. I, I'm a little bit younger, and so when when that stuff was happening, I was I was just a lot of it was a little bit heavy for me. So my brother was was older than me, and he had passed on this other stuff to me. But I think Ronnie was definitely Ronnie what about Echo your, and the Bunnymen, Susie and the Bunnymen, well, and the Banshees that's earlier, but yes, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 90s. But Ronnie, were you like a little bit. like I'm like a pavement built to spill guy? Like sure, yeah, yeah. All those guys, Dinosaur Junior, Sebado. Oh my God, uh, you know all those guys. Oasis oh, okay. came around for me. Oasis, yeah, yeah. yeah. 90s. Did it take a minute? Did Oasis take a minute for you, Brendan, or you right into it? It took me a minute, and then I sort of became obsessed. I considered a, a, an Oasis tattoo uh, when I was really? 16. Oh. Did you really? <laughs> did really? You really? I'm so thankful I didn't. I did not that. know that. But instead, I, you, went I, with, I, you went with soft cell, I heard, right? <laughs> Just on the <laughs> small of your back. <laughs> I had the same thing with Oasis, where I was like, at first at Oasis, I was like, I don't know, and then became obsessed with them, too. They were so, uh, so rad. Sorry, Jason, I cut you off 50 times because I'm geeking out. with. No, it's Sean. Go ahead, Sean. Oh, I have a thousand questions, if I if I if I may. Yeah, sure, uh, go ahead. First of all, we talk about live shows. I always ask whenever musicians come on, what's your best worst live show experience uh, story? <laughs> uh, like the the thing that went wrong the most. Well, there is the there is the the the, the opposite situation where um, it was there were two things that really happened at the at this. We did a a, a stadium run at uh, last year in the UK and we were in uh, Manchester and two things happened. <clears throat> Another, uh, a girl made a sign to uh, wanting to play drums on, on one of our songs and, and we brought her up. And when I was back there, um, I was like, you know, do you know the song? And just kind of watch me cause I jump on guitar for a second. And uh, she told us that uh, 
she wanted to do something brave because her best friend, she's like 16 years old maybe, her best friend's going um, through cancer and and that's a brave thing for her to go through. And she said she wanted to do something brave. So I learned this song. I said, get on up there. And she was excellent. She, I mean, that's she great. totally knocked that's it out cool. of the park. And it was it was one of the best gigs maybe of the of the year. It was like this huge, you know, soccer stadium. Wow. Um, How long we actually, ago? Uh, this was uh, last year, last oh, okay. spring. Yeah. Is that one of those? But the other thing that happened was, was uh, and Brandon stopped the show, he sees this guy um, crowd surfing from, mm. from the front of the house, which is where the, the sound board, the mixing board, our, our sound guy lives. He's like 80 years old. He's, <laughs> as he gets closer, you see that there's, uh, there's this old fella just riding the wave. And, and he, he, he and fell. what the fuck? They is dropped going? him. <laughs> they dropped him. He drops. Brandon stops this is the real. show. On his head. On his head. Yeah. Oh Brandon stops God. the show because it looks like you just saw feet and then yeah. just and then you didn't see the guy anymore. So we stopped. Brandon checked on him to 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 see if uh he was okay and he popped up in in a fit of joy. <laughs> and he hugged me. I went down and hugged yeah. him. Yeah. What did he say to you? You asked him, hey, are you all right? I go, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And he said, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, the, the next day in the uh, in the papers, uh, all the paper headlines read: "Crowd surfing pensioner." <laughs> uh, that's hysterical. No I way. love if that would become like a thing at Killers concert that like like old old dudes would just <laughs> crowd surf. Like that becomes uh, yeah. a thing that happens. I once did some stage diving in uh, in Vancouver. You did. You some. did. I did some. Yeah. Uh, in Vancouver, just, yeah, the stage is only a couple of feet tall, but um, I, I did. I actually had to jump up to get uh, onto the people's hands. Um, did you? But, and was Andrew originally scared? Would, would, did he see you? It's <laughs> 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 a huge wham. Oh, listen, uh, it, it, they get me fired up. They get me fired up. Um, sorry, Sean, you were gonna say. Were you wearing your short shorts? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. what was left of them? Please, yeah. go ahead, Sean. You fell out of the cage you were dancing in? <laughs> yeah, they left it unlocked. It wasn't smart. Sean, you were saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Killed Sean. Look at Sean. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> well, so I, I have a question. But Go ahead, Sean. The show's but to that point, I, I, was, and I used to work uh, in the entertainment committee in college, and we would get, I was, there was like seven people. <laughs> Coming out of the shocker department. <laughs> <laughs> what? What nerdy, what, what nerdy shit did you not do? Let's just get to that. <laughs> God damn it. President of the entertainment committee, Sean Hayes, calling. <laughs> No, I I was in the entertainment committee in college, and there was like seven of us, and we were in charge Stop of which bands. That. Yeah, we're past of it. Which bands were coming to a, the college, Illinois State University, the, one of the best universities in the world. Sure. And we got like the B fifty twos, and I remember well, NXS came, and people were like, "What's Inks?" Like they didn't know the name. Like, <sighs> oh. And then it was like, "What?" And and who else? Red Hot Chili Peppers, like all these people. And when and it was Pearl Jam, and Pearl Jam was playing, and people were stage diving and like body surfing. And I'm sp I'm work I'm maybe seventy pounds, <laughs> yeah. And I'm supposed to block the crowd from getting to the stage, and <laughs> I saw th I saw them coming, and I just would run. I'd yeah. be like I was the worst. I'm girl. entertainment committee, not security <laughs> committee. Yeah, and I had my little badge on. Hold it. it. Oh shit! Oh, God. Did you really have a okay, badge? Okay, so anyway, my question is, how do you yeah. guys how do you guys meet? <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. Oh, He's the man. best, guys. Is he not? <laughs> Award-winning interviewer, Sean. You Hayes. know, by the way, Ronnie and, and Brandon, you guys probably don't know this. Sean was once nominated mm -hmm. for uh, best host oh, for man. best host of a on podcast a host, on, on a podcast that's co-hosted by it's three people. They singled yeah. him out Hang and on. wanted to give him a singular award because his questions for, are so because of questions good. like that. How'd you meet? <laughs> How'd you meet? And then what's a funny story that happened live? <laughs> hey, but we all enjoy those are the best stories. You're right. Um, um, how did you meet? We yeah. did. We actually met like in a. We, we got to go fast because it looks like okay, Ronnie okay. has a me, business meeting. Me yeah. and uh, <laughs> me and our guitar player met through the, cl the classified ads in Las Vegas. No mm -hmm. way. Wow. Is that true? 
Yeah, so th th probably the last band to form that way. Wow. Isn't that how wow. you and, Sh you and Sh Scotty met? Uh, something right. in the back of the paper, mm -hmm. was it? Yeah, Craigslist. Yep. It was a Craigslist. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, wait, so you met in the classifieds, and then and then we didn't have we had we had a different drummer and a different bass player for a while who they were not um, into it. They weren't uh, yeah not they, the they right were, fit. Yeah, they weren't the, the right, right fit. <laughs> sure. and, that's, and and uh, one night we were playing an opening. Were we opening for for what was her name? Oh, Anne's Ronnie? band. Oh, I Anne Murray. And and Anne Ronnie band. was Ronnie was filling in. Anne Murray. Ronnie was filling in for for this for the, for this girl, and he happened to see us, and he just he Ronnie he has a way with of just just cutting right to the chase, and he just said, you know, you guys would be good if you had a, a real drummer or something like that. <laughs> I love that. I love the that. rhythm section needed help. <laughs> a rhythm yeah. section. And and so we we I mean instantly just before we knew it we were in his garage and and then we but it was it, was, it wasn't for, I wasn't trying to like shoehorn my way in I actually I I recommended a couple drummers that just again weren't the right fit like much better but drummers did you than recommend myself. them knowing that they were not going to be the right fit so that they would have to go to you Ronnie Beyond no I was like I was on this trajectory as like I must finish school so I don't end up homeless right um, mm -hmm. and and I was just doing that but the, uh, the the songs they they had e even at the time even the songs we don't even play anymore were just like uh calling me it was just it i i was familiar with it already i was just yeah. you know i knew where they were coming from and i think that was part of the problem with the other rhythm rhythm section is like the other two guys had no idea where dave and brandon were going or headed and they were just kind of just going through the motions so then the first time that you guys played as a band were you like kind of doing the like looking around going like oh right yeah <laughs> <laughs> well we were like you know let's 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 try it out like uh, you, let let's see what happens and yeah. and we just ended up like playing hours and making really? songs right on the first day just playing and we got really by the way you should know Jason Jason's laughing because he knows I've done this bit <sighs> for years it's so stupid yeah. which is my impression of every bassist right which is when he makes eye, when the when the singer makes eye contact with him <laughs> the bass so he's just on his so own he's like this Right, so he's like this. So he's just like this, playing bass. Yeah, he looks and then the around. Singer looks at him. He goes, and he goes, yeah. yeah. And that, <laughs> that's when the, smile, the yeah. knees stay together, and he goes into a deep and, squat, oh, super yeah, happy. While he, yeah. Then, oh, yeah. Oh boy, he's so stoked. Um, now wait, now Ronnie, uh, how 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 crazy do you get with your set? You you you, have, you put like because I see some some guys they'll put like a big fucking gong back there sometimes, yeah. and they'll put yeah. some some kettle drums, and they'll put like some of the 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 like xylophone that's hanging from like uh, Christmas ornaments, yeah, those yeah, things. Yeah. And like, how, you, you get like real, uh, real robust with your setup back there. Or do you keep it simple? We were we were doing like a a video. I I have a gong, but mm. we were doing this video where we were basically trying to do the uh, um, a Pink Floyd ripoff. Mm. Uh, you know when they're in the uh, Pompeii, Pompeii, the Pompeii video, and um, Nick Mason's got this awesome drums with the gong it just looks yeah. great in the desert we were making this video for human um in the desert love that video. So but like, you oh, guys make aw you guys made awesome videos by the way just as an aside thanks yeah yeah. Well. yeah 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 it's true and so it's it sort of started out with that and then i brought it on um i brought it on stage uh as almost a joke or like a, a backdrop and everything and at, <laughs> now i actually I use it. Do you have like one of those big funny mallets? Yeah, big ass. Yeah, you know, mallet the size of a baby's head. And uh, <laughs> but uh, apart from that, it's I don't I don't go too crazy. Mm -hmm. No, you guys want? Yeah, no yeah, chime just, wipes. Brandon, chime what were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna bring some tenderness. <laughs> yeah, some tenderness to this interview. You know that? You, do you remember you emailed me about Dustland, Will? You might not oh. remember this, but I think this is how we first talked. Is that I got an e you reached out about a song of ours called "The Dustland Fairy Tale." Yes, and you, that and that was where we f we first I think connected. I think you're right. And yeah. it was and I those those moments are f you know few and far between where somebody will actually f you know take the time to do that, and I appreciate it still. Oh, yeah, I do nice. remember that man. It, uh, um, yeah, I, I listen. I love I love music, and I've always been a fan of of you guys. And I find you guys. It's funny you're talking about 
uh, we, we kind of circling back to talking about getting into sort of sort of electronic music, et cetera. What I've always loved about you guys that I find a lot of your music is very anthemic. Uh, you know, like there's always like a big feel to it. You guys are kind of big feel guys. Mm -hmm. And I love your lyrics and I love the way everything kind of builds in the same way. I love the lyrics build in a way. And sometimes I don't even know a lot of the time. I mean, I don't know what you're writing about It's very personal probably. And you don't, you know, you don't explain it, but there's just something about it. And there's, and your, your music is the kind of music for me that evokes a lot of emotion. And well, are you crying right now? I'm always crying. Hey, I'm always hey, crying. Hey. Just know that. Yeah, it's okay. Um, and I do remember reaching out to you. And of course, when we emailed, uh, we emailed a couple of times. And um, and I just, I don't know, man. I just really appreciate it. I, I just love what you guys do. And I find it very inspiring. I get really inspired by music because I can't play music. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, this is one of my tunes. This is one of my tunes. Here's the neck pops. Here we go. This is your band? Here we this go. Is my, one of my songs. Uh. Look at the way he pops the neck. Someone's angry, someone's sad. Uh -huh. That sure stopped my tears. <laughs> it's so bad. Okay, that's good. Oh, you're totally... Is that you singing or no? <laughs> yeah, that's me singing. It's, that's you're doing what? Andy Bell. You're doing Andy Bell. Total, total Andy, Andy Bell. Bell. A thousand totally. percent. Yeah. Andy Bell sings his ass off. Oh, it's unbelievable. Like, it's it, he, He's sort of underrated. In the, in, For Tracy, yeah. Andy Bell is the lead singer of, uh, of Erasure. Man. Um, yeah, that was, I was like 19, 20. I don't know how old I was. Here, hey, Brandon. That sounded good. I just yep. found the email. You ready well, for what's this? What's the timestamp on? Is it like about 3, 340 in the morning? August 5th, 2009. Does it start with you up? Hey, man. Yeah, hey, man, you up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it says, hey, man, just want to drop you line and say, I love Dustline fairy, uh, fairy Tale. I uh, can't stop listening to it. Hypnotic. <laughs> And then a dick pic. Anyway, going to sleep now. Um, <laughs> anyway, call me. I'm putting my phone on. Do not disturb. Uh, oh, God, it's taking me back. It's um, taking me back. Right. Um, so, hang on. So, just just a couple more things. So, when you you do get together, you guys feel it. You've got the right energy. You've got the right kind of. Uh, a balance, or like you feel like you guys are kind of playing off each other, and, and you're all working towards the same place or the same vibe. Um, and then you start to record your first record. And, you know, look, doing that anytime we do anything, and guys, we do it as well, all of us, when you're working on something new, you're, you're doing it in a vacuum. And other than the people who you kind of work with, you have no sense as to whether or not uh, people are going to like it. You're like, people might hate this. They might say this is great. And, and so what was that feeling on the first record? before people knew who the killers were it's it's just it all sort of just started to to roll we had garage recordings that were just us playing in my garage with uh two microphones and a cd recorder wow and we we got to the point where we were everybody's amps and the drums and everything sounded like it was being mixed but it was just it, it was just a room recording and so we had we were we do that sort of like do do demos and things like that and we didn't have any proper recordings and there was this guy uh who put us in touch with a, a fella who had a, a studio in um northern california so we we need to get you guys like a, a proper recording and uh and we just went in there for you know we did one or two takes of each song you guys paid for the you paid for the studio time yourself or he we gave did a spec deal uh with with this guy he says i'm i'm gonna you know i'll record this for free I'm going to have uh, Mark Needham, who's a you know, famous mix engineer. He's done Chris Isaac and, you know, Fleetwood Mac and countless others. And, and he'll mix it, but we, we, we want a year to, to, to shop it um, if we do this. And we're like, shit, it's a uh, free record. This Okay, let's do it. <laughs> and they, like, put us up in, like, a budget suites in Berkeley, California. And, yeah. wow. and we made the – and that was, that was the first – record is wow, are those those cool. demos they were just like okay well this will work for the first it it started out as being an ep and then we um uh with this little deal a little small indie label in in uh 
in England called Lizard King. It was the first time I had Thai food in, that <laughs> Ber in Berkeley. Really? really? Yeah. yeah. Sean wants to know if you've ever tried Chin Chin. <laughs> yeah, we do the Chin Chin. Close relative. Sean, mm -hmm. wait, this is a great. Sean, do you, do you enjoy Thai food? I love Thai food, yeah. 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 I love, yeah. I love the different sauces. Yeah. You um, know, in, in Vegas, we have a place, Lotus of Siam. Yeah. If you guys ever go to Vegas, Lotus of Siam. and it is, it's, it's the, I mean, it, you got Night Market Song is amazing in, in LA, but it's Vegas yeah. has this one, um, it's called Lotus of Siam and it's a, it's a, it's not, on, it's not on the strip, it's off the strip, but it is the greatest. I'll tell you what you need to try next time you're in Vegas is the Sphere. Why don't you guys go play the Sphere? That place <laughs> is in it's great. incredible. Yeah. Oh, did you already go? Yeah, I went to that U2 show. It's yeah. unbelievable, that venue. Man, just it stunning. looks insane. Just the pictures, your mouth. What do you guys is... think of Vegas? Like living there, you don't live there, Ronnie, but Brandon, you do, right? I, I moved, I moved away too, and so oh, you did. Yeah, so yeah, three of us were born, were born there. You ever run into Kimmel? You ever see Kimmel over there when you're in Vegas? Ronnie went to the same high school as Jimmy. Really? Jimmy's a lot, a lot older. A, a he's a lot. lot. Full stop. <laughs> he's a Full stop. lot. No, I think older. that's no, that was the end of his sentence. Jimmy's a lot. And he is a lot. Yeah, he is a lot. We will, we can say this officially. Kimmel is a lot. Uh, uh, so you went to the same, but it's a good question. Like being being from Vegas, like what Sean was asking. Like I always think that I've actually asked this to Kimmel too. Like it's a is it a is it a weird place to be from? It wasn't until we left. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great answer. And you realize and how weird. Yeah, it is. and so. You, 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 you're just accustomed to seeing ads first, you know, b billboards for strip clubs and yeah. there are slot machines when you go to 7-Eleven. Like that's yeah, just, yeah. there's, my grandma's going to be playing slots while I'm getting my Slurpee. Like oh, that's wow. what, that's what life is like. Wow. And that's, and they, you don't realize that that's foreign to other people. And How did you end up in Northern California for the, for, for the record? Did you, were oh. you guys, did you guys all kind of relocate there or? Oh, I, no, that's just where Saltzman studio No, was. oh, so that was... Oh, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. that's just where the studio, this guy just was was high he high on building his brand new studio and was very eager to record somewhere. Mm, gotcha. So you guys have relocated out of Vegas into, where are you now? We're all over the place. I'm, okay. I'm in Texas right now. I, I, live in, I live in Utah. Oh, all right. Okay. I live I, in I have Utah a question. When you guys, a a after, after, a show, after a show is done and you played a show, do you guys have like a... And you're feeling that adrenaline still. Do you have like a routine or some kind of something you do to come down? Like, do you go out? Do you are you like, you know what? I'm done. I'm spent. I'm gonna go right to bed. Or do you st are you still high on the energy? I devour food. Mm -hmm. You do. Mm. Do you not eat before the show? About four. I give four hours before the gig. Yeah. You you, you don't want anything in your stomach for four hours before the gig because it, it might get uh, a little growly. Yeah, you just feel heavy. You feel, you know, I don't want to feel full, and I don't, and the acid reflux, all that oh, kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Could, if oh, it, yeah. it hits your cords, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason, yeah. Sure. Well, you, you, when you say cords, you're talking about the pants, the vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus honey. Did you say you lived in Utah? I did. I uh, well, from when I was four till I was seven, we lived in Salt Lake. Uh, oh, I forget wow. why my parents were there, but I uh, learned how to ski, uh, yeah. snowbird, and Alta. Wonderful. So it wasn't loved nice. it. Yeah. No. 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 Not at all. Beautiful state. When I was a kid, I swear I, I one of my first celebrity sightings was you. Come on. Oh, but, but maybe I was there skiing when I was a little bit older. No, no, no. It wasn't in Utah. It was like in oh. Reno or Wendover. I can't remember, but it was. It could have been Reno. Mm -hmm. And I and we were checking into some place because there was like a storm or something, and we had to. And I remember being like, I was I was only eight or nine, but I. So had, Jason was Jason was twenty five. You were famous. Well, I barely. That's a that's a kind. By word. the way, Brendan's got a very good memory, so let's keep going. I, with this. And and I was anyway. I was excited because I was like, that's yeah, that's him. You know, and trying to and, and my mom wasn't sure. But was it eight a.m.? Was it eight a.m. and it looked like he'd been up? <laughs> yeah. Was I was I come was I looking dejected from a blackjack table at the pepper mill? You that was that was me. Was he exchanging um, cash with the dude behind the Seven Eleven? You were like, you were with, you, you had some friends with you, but you were like running the, you were running the the, the show. I remember. Yeah, I thought I was pretty, pretty hot shit. <laughs> did back he have then. a, did he have a motorhome with some dirt bikes on it? Was, was he with Leif Garrett? Yeah, he could have been with Leif Garrett on my way north. <laughs> he might have been with Leif Garrett. <laughs> Leif By the way, Garrett. you know what's funny? So you guys are from Vegas, and then you've moved all over the states, and you've kind of lived everywhere. But, but you got. I, 
I my my impression is that you guys really you're so huge in the UK. I talked I talked about it before. You guys kind of in a way is, am I right that you guys kind of broke through first in the UK? Yeah. Yeah, so that first rec- record we recorded in in Berkeley was then put out by this small indie label. And that's what became our first record Hot Fuss. And um Yeah. Well, all the all the major American labels said no. Every uh, so yeah. we went so we went with this small label in England who believed in us. Wow! We were like these guys believe in us. Mm. Yeah. So we went over there and and uh, go to the love. Did a, I think we did like four or five shows, and you know the enemy was covering it, and it was just like f- things were starting to sort of um, bloom a little bit. And then we got home two or three weeks later, and all the all the American labels were um, yeah. were taking us out to dinner. We ate really well for a few uh. months. <laughs> we, we were, you know, just broke. We were, we all still had jobs. I was, you know, Brandon was at the Gold Coast slinging bags, and I was um, taking really? pictures at a wedding chapel on the Strip. And Dave wow. was no home. way, no way. Yeah, that was that was my last job, and so everything um, everything was was starting to you know to sort of come down a little bit. You know, every show we'd we'd play, there'd be somebody from some record label. Ronnie, how is your, how is your, as, as a photographer there, how is, how is your, how is your chat to your subjects when you were, when you were shooting and they oh, were the really chat. getting good shots and stuff? Would you ever say stuff like dynamite, dynamite? <laughs> like, <laughs> did you have, what was your go-to chat on that stuff? <laughs> Right to me, uh, right to me. Yeah, now right over here, <laughs> I'm not even here. I'm not even more here. Leg. You're look- more leg. More leg. More yeah. 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 leg. Dynamite leg. Wait, you're a photographer? You're not, you're not going to regret this. You're not going to regret this. Right, <laughs> that's a good one. Right. right. And who's that? Who's that over there? Who's that over there? It was a good job. <laughs> it, was, it, it was a good job. Brandon, what job. were you doing? You were slinging bags? I was a bellman. Yeah, I was wow. a bellman at the Gold Coast. Yeah. Oh, at the Gold Coast. I do want to talk about this as as its own little section because I know that we might, you know, uh, we may or may not be able to use this or whatever, but you guys are potentially, maybe I've heard, going to, speaking of Vegas, do a residency. Huh? Is that true? It's true. Oh, I'm going. This is You're exciting. Invited. We'll give you tickets. Wait. Yeah. Uh, no, um, of course you will. Of course. <laughs> Don't say of course Sean's you Sean's in the band. He's going to be Sean's there. in the goddamn band. I'm going to hold can't... up a sign instead of the, instead of the drummer. Instead of yeah. Ronnie, you, I'm gonna just Play bring keys. my keyboard. My- no, Bono, Bono kind of gently mentioned his residency there at the at the Sphere before it all happened. On, Are we making some here, news on here? Smart list, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's it's gonna be at the at, Gold Coast. It's gonna be at the. Yeah, the Coliseum. Nice. Um, oh, for real. And, yeah. and Caesar's Palace. I saw Celine Dion there. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Um, it's you know we're really excited. It's twenty. It's going to be twenty years since our first record. So we're going to play the album front to back. And, oh my god! And, no way! Wow. Yeah, and then that's we'll cool. then we'll leave and come back and play you know eight or nine more singles or whatever like oh, you know that's whatever. Awesome. That's really cool. When does that start? August is the potential. It's the last couple of weeks of August, and then we would also do uh, October and November. I think. Something oh like my! That. that is so exciting. Twenty twenty four. Yeah. No no yeah. no! August of twenty three. You ding dong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> they're, they're gonna, they, they built a time machine just so they could go do this residency. <laughs> what do you hop aboard? <laughs> you, uh, I'll totally go to that. I will totally this guy was that. nominated for best host of the year. <laughs> you guys, that's so awesome. How I just okay. I, again, I just want to follow up with this. How it is, you know, it's been twenty years, and now you're going to do this residency in your hometown. It's got to feel kind of great. It's really cool. Ronnie's mom worked at, at Caesar's Palace for forty years. Oh, oh wow! My God. What? Yeah. And, wow. And I wow. used to go. I worked at Spago as a as as a bus boy inside Caesar's Palace, and it, it was where I bought. You know, they used to have um, Virgin Records there, and I took every bit of money that I had and spent it at Virgin Records. It's so cool to come back. When we were kids, there was a thing called the Omnimax, those dome. Theaters, yeah, yeah, yeah. Omnimax, yeah. and that's the so original they, sphere. Yeah, yeah, they tore it down, and that's where the Coliseum is built. It just—it really feels like a special thing to go back there. Oh man, that's so awesome! Well, that's going to be pretty cool I'm, for you guys. Yeah, I'm so happy for you guys. I'm so happy for the audiences, for us that we get to come and 
and see you, you guys. See the way do Will that. just got free tickets from you guys with that little comment right well, there. Well, I know, Brandon. <laughs> you've still got the same email address. I'm hoping, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, great. I'm gonna hit you up. I'll email you later today. <laughs> okay. you, guys, you guys, just be cool, okay? Um, Sean, high school. Your nickname, Bus Boy. Was that true? Okay. Um, uh, guys. Bus boy. Honestly, we have, once again, we've taken up, you guys, just too much of your time. We could just, I could ask you guys about your music all day. I've just been such a fan, as you know, for a long time. You guys Likewise. were just Likewise. unbelievable talents. And, Thank you. and thanks for taking the time during your tour. I know you guys are tired and you're in your hotel room. I know. Room. Oh, it's yeah, for sure. We really, really this appreciate is, this it. This is a joy. And yeah. please, please, please send me um, your electronic album. Um, that you threw out I just so I can enjoy it. I will not <laughs> upload it. I will not upload it to the internet. Uh, but what a pleasure. What an honor yeah. having you guys on this show. It's great to see you guys again. Like, Thank you, guys. Nice to meet like you guys. Very nice guys. to meet you. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you, Thank guys. you so much. See you. See you, see you later. Bye, bye, Thanks bye. for this. Cheers. What a nice couple of gentlemen. Will, I'm, it's about time you found some nice friends. Yeah. They're good okay? dudes, aren't they? They're yep. good yeah. dudes. And... Um, uh, yeah, I did look Canadian back. level of nice. They actually. are Canadian level. Well, they have a lot of Canadian influence. In, and uh, I will say, I was just looking back at the email. <laughs> my, my email exchanges with Brandon are, over the years are um, very random. Um, but I've always been such a huge fan. And it's true. Like, you know, when you get just, I don't know, certain things like inspire you or whatever, and you feel like, I got to let him know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how great it is what they do, and you know they obviously they sell millions of records and lot, millions of fans turn up at their shows. But I don't know. I think it's nice to reach out to people and say, "Hey, you're really great, and what you did was really inspiring." And, and awesome. how lucky that he wasn't a jerk, right? It's like they'd be they yeah. say, "Be careful, you don't meet your heroes." Like, yeah. how terrible would that have been if he was just like, "Yeah, great. So what? Goodbye." Yeah, yeah. But the opposite happened. I like I like them. I feel like I've known them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. They should be called the lovers, really. I mean Did you guys like my other song? You haven't heard that song yet. Um, boy, I think I'm losing you. Are you going over a canyon? <laughs> Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? Sean. Yeah. Um Will, when you got a second, we're just doing the wrap up. Yeah, sorry. Um <laughs> sorry. So uh yeah, anyway, the, and they're such nice dudes too. They're such nice we did that. normal. For normal, for huge. <laughs> no, I was gonna say for huge mega stars. Yeah, I, was just, I was reading one of my annoying emails to Brandon, which was about uh, whether my sister could go say hi to them after the show. Oh, that's you nice. talking about cha champagne? Wanted to go? It's Chardonnay. <laughs> sorry, Chardonnay wanted to go. Shanley, Shanley, Shanley. Yep. I wanted to ask them like about the AI thing, like. Your question about like the drum, like can AI take over like can and I write tell you songs? Something? Nobody's better at asking questions after the guess is gone than you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> you are undefeated. We're going to have, uh, gonna have a, a, another podcast called Follow Up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just going to be you, Sean. Will and I are going to, we're going to skip that one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. And I'm talking to nobody. <laughs> um, hey, by the way, you, how, do, how do robots say goodbye? Bye. No, they use binary. Binary. Bye. <laughs> Don't tweak your nips when you say it, oh, Sean. He's leaning back so <laughs> satisfied. Bye. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. Smartless. Yeah.